Awesome. All right. We're ready to bring in our next guest. We're five minutes early, but he's on time. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll fire off the video. Here we go. There he is. How you doing, Marcus? So laid I'm, back at this hour of night. Yeah, I'm getting over a cold, but hopefully my brain will work uh, good enough for this. Let me see if we have an echo. I can plug in these headphones if we got an echo. Okay. All right. I think we're okay, though. Yeah, maybe ask the audience if there's an echo. I heard a little something, but it went away. So we might be okay now. We sound sound good on this end. Oh, I think yeah, we're hearing okay. with the audience yeah. here, so we're we're definitely good to go. Um, so, how you doing, pal? I've never met you before, but this is really nice to to talk to you. Uh, I enjoy your your fun zany videos, and the, but the funny thing is, is all that zany. Put it all aside. You're talking about some serious stuff, some eight figure serious stuff. Yeah, you know? I mean, I've been this, I've been doing this long enough to where you know. It's uh, it comes with the territory, so yeah. It's it's good stuff, man. Uh, I I absolutely love it, and this is a rare occasion because I don't see you out there on a lot of places doing interviews. So this is an honor, really, to have you. It really truly is uh, to do this. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about your your journey, if you don't mind, just your your personal journey of you know how you kind of have gone into affiliate and uh your web journey and then like where you are today and what your goals are you know moving forward is that possible for to start with sure. that yeah so i started back in 99 uh after i graduated high school and i was interested in magic i used to be a magician um and it was fun you know i i, I ran an ad in the magic magazine and i noticed that running that ad it cost me 170 bucks which back then I mean, you might as well ask me for a million because that was a lot of money back then. And um, so I ran the ad and I noticed that, hey, I run this ad, 170 bucks. We get 10, 12 people to join the magic show. They sign up. You know, I get 1,200 bucks. I was, I was pretty happy. 19 years old. I was like, hey, there we go. Uh, then I found this guy in the magic magazine. Yes, we do have our own mag magic magazine. <laughs> and uh, he said, you know, call me up. <clears throat> And I'll help you get some more sales. I'll help you get some more signups. And uh, so I called him up. I'm like, dude, I'm broke, but can you give me a pointer? He said, yeah, I'm going to give you a pointer, but you have to promise when it works, you come back and buy my course. I said, sure, of course I will. And so he said, change your ad from magic balloons, comedy, and fun to make your child's party unforgettable. So I'm like, okay, let's try it out. Change the ad, boom, 40 sales a month. So I went from 10 wow. to 12 wow. to 40. I'm like, wait a minute. So the ad costs the same. It's in the same magazine. Everything's the same except for words. So then I started studying marketing. Uh, fast forward a little bit. I, I started learning about SEO back when, you know, you could just put a word on your page and you would rank uh, back yeah. in 1999. And I actually learned it by accident uh, when I worked for a local cigar company. My brother worked at the cigar place and he's like, hey, dude, they want a website. And I'm like, OK, let's do a website. And I noticed it ranked and I'm like, hey, do you guys want it to rank? You know, here you go. And uh, it ranked for like free cigars and Padron and, you know, all the cigar brands. And so I was like, wait a minute, you put up a website, you get ranking, people order, you get money. Hey, that's pretty cool. I, I, I like that. <laughs> um, so I started ranking sites for limousine companies and magic stores and what I would do is I'd go to select groups and I'd be like, hey, I'm the limo SEO guy. I'm the magic store SEO Smart. guy. Yeah. And um, that boosted sales. I mean, it was it was crazy. I would email 10 people. We'd get three sales, um, which was cool. And then um, 2004, I think it was, we did some SEO for Frank Kern. And he was like, dude, if you can rank these sites, why don't you just rank them and do affiliate?" I'm like, okay, let's try that out. So I tried that out, oh, cool. and one of the sites did like 1200 bucks automatically with no extra work in a weekend. Set it up, and then boom, it made money. And I was like, wait a minute, this is pretty cool. Uh, 2006, I had been doing that for a long time. Uh, came across the MySpace niche, 
And people were like, you can't make money with MySpace. It's just a place where people put funny pictures and stupid stuff. You can't make money. And uh, I said, well, you know, there's like a million people a month looking this up. If I could find a way to make money, I think I can make a little bit. And so I found uh, this cursor program, cursors and smiley faces. And they paid me like 70 cents to $3 for every download. I was like, I think these MySpace people would want to put happy faces on their MySpace and make their little cursor a bat instead of just an arrow. Um, yeah. And that guess was right, and it paid off. And uh, that site we did with SEO and pay-per-click, and that was my first ever uh, seven-figure year, giving away happy faces and cursors and uh, stuff like that, which was pretty cool. Um, then I got into teaching by accident in 2008, or I think it was seven or eight. Um, a buddy of mine, he's like, hey, dude, can you come teach? We're going to have a teleseminar. Back then we had teleseminars before yeah. all this fancy stuff. And he's like, come yeah. on this teleseminar and teach people how to do marketing. And so I did. And then at the end, he's like, okay, good. What are you going to sell? And I'm like, sell? We're supposed to sell stuff? And so I'm like, okay, what I'll do is... <laughs> I'll go in my garage and I'll make this vid DVD and it's a hundred bucks for the DVD. And so I went in my garage, made the DVD and people ordered it. And then I got into teaching um, all the while still doing SEO and paid traffic and videos and all kinds of stuff. So, yeah. Wow. What a journey. I mean, the thing is, is, um, you know, I was thinking as you were talking, you're like the Gary V, but the guy with that started with a cigar shop instead you know, he started with yeah. his dad's wine company. You found a niche and you're just like, okay, this works. Uh, I found the love of my life now. Uh, that's mm -hmm. called finding an audience and, and actually writing copy that engages them to take an action. I mean, my God, I, I pick up so many things from uh, some of the videos that you talk about, um, you know, about shiny object syndrome and the idea mm -hmm. of, you know, staying focused on the data and all of these kinds of things. So I want to get a chance to talk about a little bit of that, but I know that you have some stuff that's sort of prepared. So whenever you're ready, you know, you want to join into that and we can just fire off questions and things like that. So whatever you're comfortable with, uh, sure, whenever, I think, you know. You... Yeah. I mean, we can definitely keep it interview style. I don't know how the stream setup works. Can I share a screen or yeah. how does that? Yeah, okay. some people have had some trouble with it. Uh, if you hit the share down at the bottom, there's a little plus. And you can share the whole, um, I think, what is the Okay, let's see, share. Yeah. Okay, slide, share screen. Okay. Easiest with two monitors. Okay, share screen. Select window or screen. Okay, so this is going to... This is going to do Firefox, which could be a problem because I don't remember my passwords. Uh, let's see. Okay. Oh, because that's your default, possibly. Yeah. Well, I had to do Firefox because my other one, the other oh, ones would not, uh, they wouldn't connect. So let me see what I can do here. Oh. Hold on a second. Otherwise, All right, no problem. We'll kind um, of fill time. Uh, otherwise, if you want, so if one of you guys can share screen, I can kind of point yep. you where to go. Like if you have an Ahrefs yeah. account, I'm not sure one of you guys does. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, cool. yeah. Okay, cool. So let me uh, stop the sharing. Okay. All right. I think let's see. Yeah, I don't think it's sharing anything, so we're good. All right. Yeah, we'll get that all uh, set up. So, um, yeah, I mean, th the thing is, is uh, I, r I really think that uh, the value um, that you give is, and I don't know how, like, how you manage every single day to kind of keep coming up with more and more stuff. I mean, it, it, it's, uh, it's gotta be from a YouTube perspective, you feel like you're hitting a lot of the same things, but, uh, it's, it's funny you, as a listener or a viewer, you kind of pick up a little thing here and there that you pick up, you know, that you're, you're talking about that makes a lot of sense. And I've got a lot of tools and that, you know, you're, you're not a big fan of, you know, just having a lot of tools. You're saying just, do the thing that's the smartest way to get the most money, the fastest without having too many tools. You know, you only mm -hmm. talk about a trust. I don't hear you talking about five other different tools because you're a master at that one thing. You, you, you like, mm -hmm. that's your gold, right? Um, the way you analyze the keywords, I learn from that all the time from just watching, you know? Mm -hmm. So, 
Oh, wait a minute. It is what allowing is me. Hold on. It's this might work. Let's see, because it says screen one, two. Oh, cool. Okay. So uh, it does work. Allow. Okay. Cool. Okay, cool. So uh, you should see you it. You are there. Yep. Yeah. Cool. There. Okay. So good. Let me just good. Now um I didn't Okay, I didn't prepare anything formal, um, mm -hmm. but we'll just kind of shoot from the hip here and then uh, kind of go from there if you have questions, anything like that. Um, but my idea, my philosophy of marketing is why would you go for competitive keywords when you can convert non-competitive? So back when I started with the MySpace niche, which was really an eye-opener um, because it was, it was literally, I found the niche the next day I was doing $300 a day profit. Because uh, it just ranked really quick uh, using some of the stuff that I'm going to teach you here. And so I went out there, and that was the time when cable TV stuff was popular, dieting was popular, all the main, you know, ClickBank stuff was super popular. Everyone was doing it. And I'm like, okay, all these people are doing this stuff. Why wouldn't I just go for something that I can rank for if I could sell? Because what we want to do is we want to get creative, like today. I did a video uh, on my channel about uh, Craigslist. Okay, it just came out mm -hmm. a little bit ago. Not doing as good as I thought it would, probably because I'm sick and I'm not on my game. But uh, I put this video out and the idea was, okay, all these people on Craigslist are looking for puppies, right? They're looking for like lab puppies, uh, Dalmatian pup, all the puppies. And mm -hmm. millions of people a year are buying puppies. And I'm thinking, okay, well, I can't really drop ship a puppy, right? That's not feasible. But <laughs> what if I could write a little guide about what to watch out for when buying a puppy on Craigslist or at auction or, or however you buy puppies? Um, yeah. And then in that guide, I tell people, hey, look, puppies have issues. Sometimes you'll have an issue. You should definitely get pet insurance. All right, now over on Offer Vault, if we go over to Offer Vault, Right. We're going to see that you can do pet insurance and it's going to pay us like a lot of money. So we'll do like pet and pet insurance will come up. We got $144 a sale, $90 a sale. Um, and these type of offers are very simple because one CPA affiliate offers, they know how to sell. I don't got to worry about, you know, a good copywriter or this or that. I know as seen on TV, I know CPA offers. If you have the right traffic, they will convert, no questions asked. Um, so that's really good. And, and when we look at that, you know, most people are going to go out there and they'll be like, okay, well, pet insurance, let's do pet insurance. And they're going to find that this is super competitive. 92, I've been doing SEO 21 years. Mm -hmm. I can't get myself a 92. Can't do it. You tell me, Marcus, I'll give you a million dollars to rank for pet insurance. I probably couldn't do it. Right. I mean, I'm not that great at SEO. And that's the secret is a lot of people, they say, well, what about meta tags? What about titles and mm. H1s and, you know, all these things? And I'm like, well, if I have the right keyword, it doesn't even matter. With the right keyword, it doesn't matter. And case in point, uh, one of my popular videos was uh, hotels near Cotton Eye Joe's, uh, Tennessee. Right. And this keyword, mm -hmm gets about, I think it's like a thousand or 200 searches a month or something, something like that. Let's see. There we go. 20 on that. I think it's, it's a derivative of like without the apostrophe that gets the most. And we rank for both of them. So 250, right? So we're looking at 250, which is decent with the subcategory words, probably getting more than that. Now this post is literally the easiest thing in the world. And we are ranking right here. Super simple. Um, we do that with all kinds of stuff. And the idea is, why would I go for all these competitive things when I can go for, instead of pet insurance, maybe, why won't my dog? Why won't my dog eat? Why won't my dog drink water? Why won't my dog Ooh. do all this stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Right? And this is like, hey, if your dog's got a problem, it, it could be like 10,000 bucks. I mean, vets are expensive. Right. Right. Um, and so when we look at this, this is a much more targeted group, whereas the insurance people are going for a super, super competitive thing. So that's uh, kind of what we look at. And then um, this year, I started getting back into domain buying, which I hadn't done 
for gosh, probably like 10 years. I just kind of forgot about it. I got busy. And so I started doing domain buying with uh, GoDaddy and I'm loving it. I, I'm going nuts. I think we bought like 50 grand worth of domains in August or something. Um, and the cool thing about it is if you know what you're looking for, you can find some. So one of the ones that I found recently uh, was Nerd Getting Fit. And this one is, it cost me 330 plus the GoDaddy fee. So I'm probably in it about 350 And if you look at Nerd Getting Fit, this is a site that I just took over. You could see where I took it over. And by takeover, mm -hmm. I mean, I just got the domain and put new content on it. So yeah, yeah. already we're at 601 um, organic keywords. If you look at the value of the words, how long does it take to get abs? How long does it take to get a six pack? Very targeted. Now, if you look at your movements, we're going to see that we have uh, a gap. So we got 29, 28, and then there's a gap down here where I took it over. So I bought it on the third. I was gone for several days. I was uh, driving my dad across the country in the motorhome, which was an interesting trip. I'm not a motorhome guy, but <laughs> you know he's not doing so hot. So I figured, hey, let's drive yeah, him out there. Yeah. Um, and then the gap. So I started getting it ranked here. I would say I probably put the first post up like the eighth, something like that. Um, so three days later, boom, we already started ranking. And for decent words, like this is, in my opinion, that's a pretty good word. You know, 4,000 searches a month, I'll take it. Um, so this is the kind of thing we're looking at, and it just started skyrocketing with a bunch of the rankings, number seven there, seven, 10, six. Um, and what we're doing is I'm taking this, putting all the old stuff up. So the old stuff is down here below the third, right? And so I took and said, okay, I'm going to put up this page again. Boom, there's my page. Then I'm going to put up this page. And so by doing that, what happens is now I get data, right? And I get data by looking at it and saying, okay, well, you know, what does it rank for now? Okay, maybe we'll go here and we'll do volume. And we'll be like, okay, uh, that's a number 77. And I didn't even target that word. I could boost that up and do better. Uh, this one's a number 93. I could do better on that. This one's a 79. I could do better on that. So I'm looking at where we're at. And the strategy is, okay, how can I get in there, figure out where we're at, treat each blog post different, right? Most people are going to go in there. They'll be like, here's my blog. I'm going to put some ads on it. And I hope I make money. No, no, no. I go through and I say, okay, this post is its own entry point. How do I monetize that post specifically? This one, different entry point. How do I monetize that specifically? And by doing that, we're treating each thing different. Every traffic, every click is now monetized to the maximum amount. And that's how you build. And that, that's why people give up. Like the guy who had this site, he gave up because he didn't, he didn't know how to do this exactly. And then so uh, each page. Is an, is an asset. I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, delayed a little bit. So each, that's yeah. how you're looking at it, right? I mean, you're myself, yeah. I'm back, so it's a little bit hard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. So each loud? page. No, you're good. Okay. okay. Yeah, each page and post, each thing that ranks. So like if I go here and I'm like, boom, here's Hotels Cotton Eye Joe's. What I'm going to do is instead of just putting an Expedia ad everywhere, I'm going to figure out what those people want. Maybe there's like a concert venue at that place. Maybe there's um, tickets to that place. Maybe there's something I can do to make that more profitable. Because when we do that, you're going to look at each one individually. And instead of making, you know, the average person, the average blog is probably on this traffic going to make less than 10 cents a visitor. That's just the average. And that, that's probably pretty high. Most people make less. So if I can mm -hmm. say, well, I got 4,400 people that are probably going to hit that page. What can I do with them? They're looking for protein. You know, let's go over here and see uh, protein. Okay. Or let's spell it right. I used to make a lot of money by not knowing how to spell, but yeah. since the search engines have fixed that, 
All right, so we'll go yeah. like this. So protein, there's our spelling. We'll go over here, protein, boom. And we got these protein things. So like if I can do this, now this is going to do some money. All right, because if I could do 30, then I'm just going to say, well, that'll probably convert pretty good, right? It's pretty solid. I, I could probably do better. Maybe we'll do muscle. Yeah, here we go. This is where we're at. So eternal nutrition muscle. Feed them. That's a badass landing page, right? That thing will convert like crazy. Tell us where to send your free bottle. Yeah. That's, that's a pretty good one. So that, if it ties into protein, muscle, stuff like that, now I'm looking at 140. I ought to be able to get a 1% conversion on that. Now I'm looking at thousands of dollars a month versus pennies on the dollar by just generically throwing ads at it. Do you know if you can um, iframe these kinds of CPA offers into another website or is that taboo? Do they detect it that? De it depends on the offer. Like some do allow it. However, I would say I can do better by pre-selling it. Mm -hmm. So if I went on my page, like if this was me and I was doing this exact offer, what I would do is I would do something like protein alone didn't work for me. Try this for mm -hmm. free. And then I'd put click here and it would be an orange button with a little arrow on it. It would match. Right. Tie it together. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense when they get to that landing page that it's all one thing yeah that makes a lot of sense that's mm -hmm. awesome yeah and then i would wow. probably even so, make sure of it on there too what about uh what about uh paper call do you do phone um calls as an affiliate i've tried paper call um i didn't do very good at it when i thought i was going to um the reason is is a lot of people know uh i'm seven years sober or almost eight years sober. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a channel for addiction. Let me see if I can find that. And so we were doing that and I didn't like my addiction channel. I'm very temperamental about what I share with them um, because it's mm -hmm. something very, I mean, it's something I really care about. This is, you know, like, mm -hmm. Hey, I want people to get sober. I don't care if I make that much on it. Um, but on this channel, we did some paper call. It didn't do that great. Um, we did better with my own offer. So I've done some paper call in the past, made a little bit, haven't gone into it as much as I would have liked to. Um, if I was going to do paper call in the future, I would do it with paper click. I probably would not do organic. Oh, interesting. Oh, interesting. So you would, so you would you optimize would your optimize paper click or your, your uh, uh, paper call or whatever mm -hmm. um, to, to, Buy low, Buy sell low, high, sell kind of. High yep. Yeah, I would go for okay. inexpensive traffic, and then I'd just play mm -hmm. the numbers game. Because if you do pay per call, let's see here. Pay per call. It's down here. So there it is. Some of these are really finicky. So, like on the eight hundred dollar rehab ones, they are pretty finicky about what you get. Right. It has to be a specific mm. call. It has to be certain time of the day. It has to be a certain part of the country. Um, so it, it's a little misleading on that. Um, but I mean, you're getting a thousand dollars per call. So, you know, that comes with the territory. They're not just going to give you a thousand dollars if, you know, regular people call and there's a bug trying to eat me here. But, uh, <laughs> it's Florida. You know, you get that. Yeah. Yeah. There's bugs yeah. everywhere. Right. Which uh, actually, uh, it's a good niche. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Bugs everywhere. Dot com. Yeah. yeah. Well, for paper call, what you're talking about, this actually fits. Get yeah. rid yeah. of uh, yard. So we're going to try to target like get rid of in yard. So mm -hmm. get rid of mushrooms in yard, get rid of moles in your yard. So get rid of ticks in your yard. All right. So mm -hmm. this here, I'm going to I'm going to go up a level and I'm just going to well, if it'll let me. And I'm just going to do get rid of ticks. 
Okay, now we got something good and we're like, okay, get rid of these ticks. Dog insurance, that's in my brain. Um, also, what I'm looking at is pest control. Pest control is a paper call and they're a lot more friendly than the addiction ones. $35 a sale, mm-hmm. that's something I can do. Um, and this niche, I mean, it's it's crazy. There's so much stuff here. And then you go the next one. Another one was get rid of, uh, what were they? Chinch bugs. Chinch bugs. I think that's how you spell it. Get rid of chinch bugs. Um, those are the ones that kill your lawn. And I probably spelled mm-hmm. it wrong. But look at that. It's all green all the way down. Wow. That's that's really cool. I mean, the, the way you use... Um um a ahrefs to kind of use it as a, a keyword suggestion it's like all in one step you use it for keyword suggestion but you get the mm-hmm. the stats and the keyword difficulty and that's like a a number you seem to really rely on is that kd right and, oh, yeah. and sort of figuring out where you're going um based on the value mm-hmm. um and no you talked a little bit about pay-per-click um do you use that um for warming up an organic um campaign at all or do you use that just as it is uh, to buy low sell high completely separate okay Mm -hmm. um yeah so i mean we i've done a lot of agency work um over the years and sometimes we do a small pay-per-click campaign at the same time to Mm -hmm. uh try to get some you know some transparent data i like to call it over to google so they can see mm-hmm. bounce rate is low and you know see that people are spending time on the page i only do that if the page has been optimized obviously because nothing's worse than a, a crappy page that people bounce off of uh to sync you with google um mm-hmm. now with all of the algorithm updates and things like that it seems like from the things that you're teaching it doesn't really matter because you're, you're coming up with all of these side door ways of getting traffic. Like you said, the Craigslist uh, thing or the, you know, going after MySpace or going through these other things where it's not your problem, what the algorithm changes, you're just going, putting yourself where the traffic is. Right. I mean, it just seems like that's, yeah. Well, and it's very much like we want to do a good job. So when you're, excuse me, when you're talking about bounce rate, okay, there's ways to deal with your bounce rate. And years ago, um, I had a lottery website and this was strictly a paid traffic. And this is where I learned it. So um, Mm -hmm. in all frankness, when I first did SEO from 2000 to 2008, I was terrible at monetization. Like I was okay. I made a lot of money because I got a lot of traffic. But if I had that traffic today, I would have made 10, 20 times as much. Um, And the reason is because up until 2008, we got hit with some of the SEO stuff, uh, some of the algorithm changes, mostly because a popular marketer took the way that I ranked, built it into his software. Now a million people had my footprint on everything. And when that got shut Mm. down, it was like, okay, everything went with the with the bathwater. But what I look at is I really look at, okay. how can I monetize? Because once we got that first hit in 2006, seven and eight, um, I had to go paid traffic. I was like, okay, I got people to feed. I need to do paid traffic. So I started with paid traffic and I had to learn to monetize like crazy. Right. I, there was no way around it. I had to learn to monetize. Um, and you know, it's different. Like if you're out there, and you're sitting there and you're like, okay, here's my landing page. And I want everyone who's watching this to really think about this because this will change your life in terms of monetization. So I want you to think about this. Right now, you learn all the fun SEO stuff, right? And SEO guys Mm -hmm. are completely different than pay-per-click guys, all right? And when we look at this, the SEO guy's like, oh, I want free traffic, therefore it's free, which means all money is free money and I'm happy. If you're the pay-per-click guy, you're like, okay, every visitor is 25 cents. Or uh, on the MySpace example, it was five cents per visitor, two to five cents per visitor. So if you got five cents a visitor coming out of your pocket, right, 0.05 times, you know, 50,000 people a day, 
All right, now you got a big check coming out every day, regardless of whether your site converts or not. Your website goes right. down, right. you're still spending for traffic to a dead website. Been there, done that. Um, and what happens is you start to look at these different and you start to look at, okay, I got to make more than five cents. I have to, otherwise I'm not profitable. This guy up here with the SEO, he's like, well, you know, I'll take what I can get. And it changes your mindset. And then when you come back to SEO and you look at it, what you're going to do is you're going to look at engagement stuff. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at engagement based on the keyword. Okay. Everything is separate. I learned this with paid traffic. When I bid on uh, basketball layouts for MySpace, different landing page yeah. than yeah. music players for MySpace, than uh, Tinkerbell MySpace or whatever, right? All those were different. So what I learned is that each spot is different. Each page, each post, each where the traffic is coming is different. So now my job is to say, how do I engage them? Well, what we want to do is we want to use things that are interactive, things that are natural. Okay, you hear about native advertising. Okay, native advertising mm -hmm. gets close. All right, the idea of native advertising is we're going to put an ad that looks like part of the website, right? So we're going to go to the website. If I was going to go here, and I want you guys to do this as an example. Let me see if I can find this here. Um, and I want you to really think about this. Okay, let's say I was Jeff Bezos. I'm not, but let's say I was. And I said, you know what, Daryl? I'm going to give you 24 hours. You got 24 hours on the homepage of Amazon. How are you going to get as many people as possible from Amazon to your site? And you start to think about this and you go, wait a minute. Okay, what do we, what do we got here? Uh, would I put a little link up here that says, you know, cool stuff? Would I put an image? What would I do? How would I get as many people as possible to my site from this page? And then what that's going to do is it's going to force you to think different. So if I was going to do that, what I would do is I would put something like, uh, let's see, if I was going to get as many people from Amazon as possible. Okay, you got the echo, you got the fire. Let's see what else they have. Cyber Monday. Okay. Sign in. More deals. Check out. Okay, that's sponsored. That's interesting. I like to, to note that. Isn't so it? Can I, I just say, uh -huh. can I just say that that website is not that beautiful for the amount of money that they have? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that You think that's on purpose, don't you? I know it is. Yeah, I know for a fact yeah. that's, I, that that is the number one thing people tell me. They buy websites from me. They look at my websites yeah. and they're like, dude, get out of the 90s. You know, we saw something on uh, this whiz bang product that says your site's going to be beautiful. And I'm like, dude, look at the top websites. <laughs> Amazon <laughs> makes one out of every two sales online. So if you bought something online today and it wasn't at Amazon, they got another right. sale that wasn't you. Right. So they they're making the data. Exactly. So the question yeah. is, is what would you do? And you look at one of the most successful websites, Google. Yeah. Literally the most simple website ever. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and that's yeah. that's by design, because what I want to do is I want to capture the attention. Uh, the, the basics of marketing, everyone knows, is A-I-D-A. I-D-A. Attention, interest, desire action. So if I was on the homepage of Amazon and I had 24 hours and it's like a money grab, right? You're like, okay, how am I going to get as many people? Because if I get the people, I get them free for the 24 hours, hypothetically, right? So what I would do is I would probably, I'd probably do something like how to save 10% on your next Amazon purchase. If if I could back that up, right? We have to make sure that we're mm -hmm. truthful and we back it up. If I could back that up, right. I'll right. probably do that. Or I could do something like a drop down box, like when I did the lottery website. Okay. Um, lottery is a tough one to convert. Like, how are you going to do it? So, what I did is I bid on uh, the winning numbers. 
okay? And I had this little drop-down box over here. And in the drop-down box, it would say uh, November 29, November 27, November 26. And they'd be able to drop down to the date to check the lottery numbers. Now, most people on their websites get a 70% plus bounce rate. That means 70% of the people come to their site and leave without doing anything. This is the normal. This is, you Google it. That's the normal. You want to take a stab at what the stick rate on this website was with that drop-down box? Uh, 60%? So far, 90%. 9% of the people who visited this page clicked on that drop down. Cause you made it essential, right? Essential. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. Of Google, the people who go to Google, how many put a search in the search box? Yeah. All yeah, of them. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, that's, that's what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. If you go and you have a mortgage website, would it make sense to say, uh, find your mortgage rates, put your phone number in here. No, that ain't going to work. Nobody wants to do and that. And that's so funny because you think about um, exit signals mm -hmm. uh, with with the fact that analytics is grabbing all of that information, you know, all the Google Chrome browsers, everything's Google properties, right? Mm -hmm. They're seeing the exits, but literally if you made a little page that said something, now take action with this and nothing else happens until they take that action, you wouldn't have an mm -hmm. exit from that page. You might have an exit from some other page, but not from that page, you know? Uh, exactly. So that's a very interesting way of thinking. And that's, uh, I learned this strategy in 2008 when I had a mortgage website. And I had this mortgage website and I found the keyword mortgage calculator. I was paying 30 cents a click. And I was like, dude, 30 cents for a mortgage click? That's pretty good. And so what I would do is I would buy $300 a day worth of traffic. I think that was about a thousand visitors mm -hmm. of those thousand visitors. The average person clicked on eight other pages. So now I have 8,000 ad impressions because mm -hmm. I knew how to get people to click the ads. I had 30% of the people clicking the ads, which means 30% of 8,000 is, I don't know, 2000, 2,500, which means more people were clicking the ad than actually visited the site which is crazy. Wow. Um, yeah, that's that's really good. And when you think about this, you have to think in terms of what are you going to do? And that's why like, I actually had all these programs built. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. I had all these programs built for WordPress because I did this all in HTML back in the day. Um, yeah. And then I, I, I came over to WordPress and I'm like, okay, the search engines love WordPress. I need to make this stuff work for WordPress. And so what I did is I made these tools where I can manipulate every page of WordPress the way I want, and I can have things that engage. So I'll give you a little story uh, that's kind of embarrassing, but I'll share it anyway. I am a sucker for those ads and those links that say, um, you won't believe what was under their bed after 20 years. And I click it. And I'm like, damn, page one didn't tell me what's under the bed. And I go to page two and I'm like, page two didn't. And 30 pages and 20 minutes later, I'm like, what am I doing with my life? What is wrong with me? <laughs> well, I'm learning marketing. This is what I tell myself. Um, yeah. But what happens here is now you get these people that are clicking pages and it's giving these signals that these people are engaged as heck on your site. Yeah. And so now we want to take all this stuff that we learn because those work. If a guy can go on Facebook and make some stupid little picture with a circle that says, you won't believe this and get me to look at 10 different pages, he's making money. So now if I can right. take that right. and do that on something specific, like someone searching for, you know, anything like over here on, let me see, I have my camera in the way. I think it's down here like this, right? This here. There's a little box that that glides here. You guys have seen these. It's like a slider box. And so what I do in this example, they come here and they're like, okay, here's my top websites that made money. The Betafish website, the Tattoo website, the MySpace website. That's literally what it looked like. People argue and they're like, you didn't make money with it. And I'm like, okay, but I did. But, you know, <laughs> each his own. Um, and so then when they get through it, 
it says, want to see my profitable sites? Boom, sends them to another page, right? So this is mm -hmm. tracking everything and I could actually track where they fall off, how deep they go, do they make it? And then I can even, on the last slide, I could play a video, I could have it stop, I could have it replay, I could redirect them, whatever I want. But the idea is, is to get them to go through it and 70% do go through that. That is, that is great. I mean, the thing is, is you, you're building your own data. You rely on Ahrefs for data, but also you're, you're using this to kind of grade, you know, grade the efficiency of your, your asset, whether it's an ad, whether it's a page, whatever it is to kind of, you know, gauge what you're going to do next, uh, guys. So if you're listening to what he's saying, this is, this is how it's done is, you know, regardless of whether you think, um, uh, the affiliate marketing dude, Marcus, uh, put his, he made his, um, emoji, um, <laughs> retro emoji page on MySpace. that one, <laughs> uh, whether you think that he made lots of money on that or not, it worked. And he knows it because of the data. He followed the data of, <laughs> of that. And he saw that it, you know, converted. And then when you see something convert, then what do you do? You double down on it. Right, you put a little bit more money behind it, a little more gas uh, into the car on that. Um, so that's that's really good stuff. I, I see you also use arrows a lot, and like mm -hmm. you, you make it look like you write free in a pencil or a pen. Um, mm -hmm. These kinds of things are, you know, you know, seen as you know, uh, marketing typical marketing things, but why? Because they work, right? When you've optimized a page, it's funny how when you saw that one page, the way it was designed, I've seen a ton of pages like that. Well, why guys, why, if you're building a CPA network, would you build a page a certain way for that target market and not like try to make it, you know, the most elegant thing in the world? I think a lot of these box stores are making a mistake. If you look at some of their marketing, like Macy's and some of these places, they have these very beautiful and beautiful, all this kind of stuff. But look at Amazon's homepage. Mm -hmm. Amazon's homepage was not that beautiful. It was, it was well, bright orange. You know, it was call to actions and it was not like, you know what I mean? It wasn't over the top images and fine, fine fonts and all of that kind of designing stuff. So um, ugly it up a little bit, guys. <laughs> exactly. And when you think about it, <clears throat> it's kind of like the argument between interruption advertising and direct response. I'm a direct response marketer. I need to see something now. Like even last night I was, I'm hiring someone and I put an ad up and I'm excited because I got people who responded to my ad. I love that stuff. I don't know why I just do. Um, yeah. And so when you look at it and you look at how Amazon started, a lot of people don't follow this because they look at, okay, well, Amazon's big and now they're rich and they're going to space and whatever. Okay. And ugly site aside, it doesn't matter. What happens is you have companies like Coca-Cola who have an advertising budget and they're just going to make money because we all drink Coke. Well, I try not to, but you know, people drink Coke. That's what they do. And so they don't have to get a direct response. They're not out there going, all right, that ad on the, uh, American Idol, how many Cokes did we sell? No, nah, they're like, whatever. Did it go up? Did it go down? That's all they're looking at. Um, when Amazon started, if you take a look at it, Amazon started and uh, Bezos was like, what am I going to sell? Right? It actually started as a bookstore. I'll try to draw a book here. Here's our book. Right? Started as a bookstore. And if you listen to why he started this, it's because he was an SEO guy. He said, wait a minute. So I could literally sell books millions of books. This is the one item in the world that has millions of different SKUs that I can rank for that's fairly easy to ship, right? It's not like we're shipping all the car parts in the world. That's difficult. But books, we could do fairly easy. And so he said, okay, we're going to rank for this book and this book and this book and this book. And then what he did is he got a customer through direct response. He actually patented, patented, that's how you spell it, I think, right? The one click order button called the OCO one click order. And the reason is, is because he wants you to order by just thinking about it. 
Like that's why they came up with those little buttons where you're like, you're, you know, you're sitting on the toilet and you're like, I got to push a button. I need more toilet paper. Amazon's going to send it to me. You're in the shower. Oh, I need more shampoo. Push the button. I will buy the, the washer and dryer. I need more of this. Um, and the idea is you need to make the lowest barrier of entry, lowest barrier of entry possible. And with books, it's cheap. You know what you want. It's not like, oh, man, am I going to want a refund on that book? No, you get the book. And if you wanted to read about the topic, you'll be happy. If you're not, then you won't. Um, so it was a low barrier of entry. And then what he did is he mined the data. And he's constantly mining data. And he gets in trouble for some of it, where it's like, OK, uh, let's look at what the competitors are doing. Let's look at what's selling. And now he knows what most of America wants to buy. Now, the cool thing about that, and I want you to get this, whoever's watching, you have those tools at your fingertips too, right here. Now, what you've been taught is that you need to go for buyer markets. You need to get markets like refinance and, and um, how much does this cost and how much is this? And I need to sign up for that or reviews, which is okay. Reviews are okay, but kind of it gets a little saturated when everyone figures it out. But what I do is I go through and I'm like, I'm an affiliate marketer. I don't care what I sell as long as it's ethical and it's within my morals. That's it. There's a few things I won't touch because I'm like, Hey, you know what? That's not my morals. Like there's people who have offered me thousands, actually millions uh, to promote these certain products that are like expensive. And I'm like, I'm not going to do that. I don't care how much I can make. It doesn't vibe with me. Someone else can do it. That's fine. Um, but that's not my cup of tea. And so as long as it fits that, I could sell whatever I want. doesn't matter. I can get paid on anything. does not matter at all. I could go out there and say, well, you know, I want to get a lot of money. I could do Rolex watches, right? Or uh, whatever it is. And I can go through and do these low competition uh, Rolex things. Um, I can go through and I can say um, how to get rid and i'm going to do this off screen because i'm very careful about <laughs> what shows yeah. and i know i do this on right on, on stuff too so <laughs> i think yeah. we're okay yeah we're looking okay yeah nothing weird there um but for get rid of we have like get rid of hiccups fruit flies gnats dandruff stuff like that and we can go through and i can look at a glance and say okay well you know these people want to get rid of a double chin. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I am now going to drill down and do double chin. Now that I found that market, because I'm like, okay, yeah, people want to get rid of that. And I'm just going to keep doing it off screen that way. Sometimes you get weird stuff and uh, you know, you got to watch out for that. Imagine, imagine making eight figures with double chins. I mean, just affiliate <laughs> double chin. <laughs> Well, and, and you have to look at the numbers. So if I look at this, I'm like, okay, people wanting to get rid of a double chin, they're prob they might buy a course or, you know, some, they probably need a diet overall. That's probably what they, they really need. Um, so I would look at this and say, okay, we got half a million visitors a month, specifically looking for getting rid of a double chin. We got a ClickBank book. I know about double chin. I don't know how good it is. I'd probably have to test it out. Uh, people looking up double chin surgery. Now, this is interesting because if you're an AdSense publisher, what's going to happen is this amount's going to skyrocket. You're going to get a lot uh, because you're going to get actual surgeons. And like if I do double chin surgery, and again, I'll do it off screen. That way we don't get any weird. Um, so double chin surgery, the ads that I get are all local Orlando cosmetic surgeons. And they pay a lot of money, like an insane amount of money. Um, and if I can tap into that and say, okay, well, you know, I can get them to click. Maybe I can have that as a page. And now I think to myself, when I set up my site, I'm starting to think like, okay, what do we got? We got the double chin. We got the ClickBank offer. We got diet offers. Now diet is what I call a off beaten path. Okay. This is like, it's not direct. Like the best thing in the world would be if there was a ebook for how to get rid of your double chin with a good sales page that was free 
and I got two bucks to give it away, boom, that's a direct hit. That doesn't exist. Next up, we got the ClickBank thing. Okay, off the beaten path is the diet. So it's going to convert a little bit less, but it'll probably pay me more. Next, we're going to have things like uh, pay-per-click ads for the surgeons. Okay, so I'm going to keep all these in my wheelhouse and I'd be like, okay, so I want to redirect my traffic. Maybe on every page, I'll have a little thing that says, is double chin surgery right for you? Or maybe have a before and after. This is how double chin surgery works or whatever. And then that page would not be an SEO page because I'm not going to rank. That's going to be all local. I'm not going to rank. The purpose of that page is going to be to show ads for is double chin surgery right for you? Does that make sense? Yep, I, you have no yep, audio. Sounds, sounds good to me, yeah. I don't know, Daryl, I think we lost your audio there. Just uh, Oh, just I had a mute on. I'm there. sorry, yeah. guys. Yeah, sounds good to me. Thanks, Marcus. Cool. Yes. Yeah, and that's, One of the uh, things I was going to ask you mm -hmm. is uh, with all of these campaigns and all these things going on, a couple of questions. One, do you use a VA to do all of this work or several VAs, or do you do it yourself just so you can stay in the game? And then two, how do you manage all of these things like to keep an eye on whether something's working? Because you said, I'll try this offer, but I don't know if it's going to work. And then, you know, all of that back and forth, kind of the organizational side of like scaling an, an operation of uh, affiliate deal, you know, offers and stuff. Mm -hmm. What I do is mostly I'm logging into my affiliate accounts a thousand times a day. I had an employee that used to call me the F5 guy because I would just refresh everything all the time. Um, <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm doing that and I'm also using the tools that I have on my WordPress. So like that uh, slider tool that I showed you with the little websites on it. Uh, we also have Button Voodoo, which this is a really cool tool. Um, that allows you to put buttons on your site and I can go through and I can have buttons. So like these buttons here, this is getting an 8% click through rate. That's pretty darn good on a mm. set of buttons and what they look like. Let me see if I can find a page. Oh, you know what? It's actually on, um, lift affiliate program. So for lift affiliate program here, I believe, yeah, so this is Button Voodoo. Notice how they look like part of the page and they're really, like that's where your eye goes. You're like, hmm, okay, yeah. I want this stuff. Yeah. Um, now this one here is actually being tracked. You can see if we click on edit post, this is being configured by Button Voodoo right there. Uh, and it looks like it's ID one. So ID one, that's getting a 2%. Now the reason it's getting 2% is because I show it on everything. Um, but still, site-wide, 2%, not too bad. I'm not too worried about that. Um, does it track uh, hovers? Does it track at all? It does not. No, that okay. you would want to use something like Crazy Egg. Okay. That way, because if you had that internal on your WordPress, it would slow the site down way too much. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Marcus, can I just ask, is WordPress your, your go-to? Do you use any other uh, platforms as well? I mean, you mentioned you're using like a HTML builder or something before, but is, is WordPress what you use now for everything, or do you have other things that you, you use? Um, if I'm going to do something specific, like an order form, I'll do HTML. So like my order right. forms, um, let's see, simple sites, bonus, that one. So this order form is actually HTML, but it's really PHP, mm -hmm. which is the same thing. You just name it PHP. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is an order form that we use for that. Uh, so I do, if I'm selling my own product, I'm going to use like ClickBank or I'm going to use these order forms or even PayPal. Like people talk to me about, about drop shipping. And it's like, all you need is a PayPal button. You don't need Shopify. I mean... What I'm looking for is if I'm going to go for a platform, what is the benefit of the platform? Okay, so like let's say ClickFunnels. ClickFunnels is cool, whatever, good. Um, is it going to do anything different than I do now? Probably not. I got my email program. I got my order forms. I'm dialed in. Um, if we're looking at uh, Shopify, okay, what I want to do is I want to say what is the benefit other than what I can already do. And this is what's going to help people if you're struggling to make money 
you need to run the leanest, cheapest machine possible. You have to, because if you start racking up all these programs and all this software and all this stuff, it's going to be, you know, 2000 bucks a month before you're even out the door. But if I go out there and I'm like, hey, I'm going to do WordPress for $6 a month. I'm going to get all these free tools and I'm going to use PayPal for my uh, order button. Boom. It's free. Mm -hmm. And then once I start making money, then I can start adding tools on. Um, and this is important because if I'm going to do a different platform, like people say, well, what about Facebook pages? Well, there could be a benefit to Facebook pages. And that is, are they going to give me traffic? Okay. Is it going to give me traffic? Does Shopify have something built in where I can get traffic? Maybe, maybe not. I'm not an expert on Shopify, but I don't think so. Um, eBay, is that going to get me traffic? If so, I'm going to utilize that traffic method. But if I'm going to do all the work and all the SEO and stuff, I'm going to make it super lean and super inexpensive so that I can convert like crazy. Yeah, that, that's really, great. One of the things, uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is great. One of the things I've taken from this is this idea of making it look like the website, so you don't need necessarily a fancy banner or or you know some of the sort of more advanced, oh, I don't know, more, not even more advanced, fancier tools. That mm -hmm. the the idea of just putting it in as a you know a, a, an HTML link with a you know blue in blue with an underline is is enough potentially to get the click, and then it's, it feels like from what you're saying that might even convert more. Than having the, the the fancy uh you know the the fancy banner so i think that's uh, that's a great insight mm -hmm. absolutely and um if anyone is using wordpress this theme literally if you want to make this theme for wordpress it's a free theme we provide and all you do is replace the logo so you just open the image edit it how you want save it save the file as the background zip it up you're good to go um, that's a super easy way to go. We use it on all of our sites, super simple. Um, and it works. I mean, this format works. And then sometimes we'll do like a double sidebar. And the way that this theme works with the tools that we have is I can have my pages and posts have different stuff. So I can have a two column theme on just posts or just a couple of posts or just one or two or one, three, five, and nine. Um, and I can control it, which is really important because a lot of people don't realize, you know, what you're doing is you're confusing the visitor and giving them too many things to click on. Um, Amazon, the homepage, there's a lot of confusion there, but we go to Amazon for one reason and that's to search. So they get away with it. Um, and, and right now where most of us are, we can't get away with that. We can't afford to lose one visitor. Um, and we have to focus on how am I going to make each person work. Um, and I think we did like an example here where this was the banner. I'm not going to use the banner. The affiliate company gives me nine times out of 10. I'm going to use my own. So um, you have a program where you talk about um, high ticket niches, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that program? Because I'm really interested myself. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The high ticket niche program what I do is I go through, so like for you, I would bring you in and you'd say, oh, hey, you know what? I really want to be in the weight loss niche. Or you'd say, hey, Marcus, I don't know what niche I want to be in. Would you pick? And then you'll come to me and, and I'll say, hey, what kind of things do you know about? What do you like? And don't think it's the normal, which is, hey, market your passion, because I think that's mumbo jumbo. Um, I mean, marketing your passion is good if there's a market and it works and the competition's okay. But for most people who just want to make money with SEO and websites, you got to you got to look at the data first. And so you would come to me and what I would do is I would do all the research on the niche. I'd find something like, let's say, double chin. If that was one that I found was good, I would go out. I would try to acquire a expired domain name or a domain at auction. And I'll try to get this domain for you the best way possible, like I did with Nerd Getting Fit, because that was like, boom. Three days. Most SEO guys are like, oh, it's going to take six months and you got to do this. We're getting results in, in days. Um, and if if we can do that, I think more people will stay in the game because they're going to be like, hey, I see it working. Um, so I would go through, I'd find the domain. We would set up the site. It's going to look exactly like this. 
And the number one complaint is, Marcus, I paid $1,000 for a site that looks like this. Oh, man, I feel like I got ripped off. But you have to see what's going on behind the scenes. Because if you came to me and I said, I'll give, give me 100 grand and I'll make you a website, and it looked like Amazon.com, most people would think they got ripped off. Like, think about that. If I charged you $100,000 and this is what you got, you'd be like, yeah, Marcus, I don't know about that, buddy, you know? But then we go yeah. to Amazon and we're like, he's making the money. So you have to understand that what we think works isn't always what works. And what we think people will buy isn't always what people will buy. And what we'll buy, what we will buy, isn't always what other people would buy. Like some people think spending $100,000 on a car is ridiculous. Some people think, mm -hmm. you know, um, certain things we buy are, are crazy. And so we have to look at that. But when you get your site, what we do is we put four pieces of content on it. Um, so you'll have four pieces of content based on if it's a domain that I acquired, I'll do the research and I'll look at it. So in this example for nerd getting fit, I would go into Ahrefs. And when I took this over, or actually, you know what? Let's, I'll find you one. So let's do domains. So these are the premium domains we have. Okay, so like this, Jolly Covers. I like this one because I looked at this and I'm like, okay, Jolly Covers, which sounds like a, I don't know what that sounds like. It just sounds weird. Um, but what it is, is it's seat covers and different things for cars. And so we'd look at this and I'd be like, okay, what did it rank for? And a lot of people will say, you got to look at this. Yes and no. I'm more concerned with the rankings. So I'm going to look at the movements and I'm going to go through and I'm going to look for the ones that have the highest volume and the, the lowest position. Lowest meaning like up to one. The best. So I would yes. go through yeah. and I would make content on this. Boom. And I would make content on 39 and 20. I go through and find, sorry, I have a camera in the way. That's why I have to look all around. So I'd find that. I'd probably do one on that. And then I would also do car seat covers. So I would get a little creative with this because there's only one with 100. So I would go keywords. And I know I can rank for something with like a 10 or 15 because it was ranking. I definitely do. I would do one on the 25 best Walmart seat covers. The reason I would do that is because I want the names and models as well, right? So if I can get that post and I can have them do 25 different ones, now I'm going to rank for all these different types, right? Because if we do this, watch what happens. If I do Walmart seat covers and then I do car seat covers and I take this and I put this into Ahrefs, here and I think depending on their link structure it might be funny let's see here there you go so this one post for car seat covers has 2500 keywords boom I'm going to start tackling the different brand names the different stuff that they have and then I'm going to go for all these different things and I'm going to get as many as I can in one post so that would be content number two. And then I'd probably do, you know, uh, for babies, pink. I might as well get 3,400 searches a month. Um, and I'm going to go for all of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all the research for you. We're going to get the domain. We're going to put four pieces of content to get you started, which, by the way, nerd getting fit. Excuse me. This cold is kicking my butt today. This only has three pieces of content on it. And we have, um, let's see, they're getting fit, overview. And from those three, we have 601 uh, keywords. And it's growing every day. Like I think it was 255 was just last night. Um, so that's what we're going to do is get you started. And then once you get started, if you stay on that path, that's where the magic happens. Because now we could go through and be like, okay, these are the seat covers, you know, uh, Dickie's seat covers or or odor eliminating or whatever it is, now we can build this up. And then I'm going to start to think, okay, where's my jackpot? Because going Walmart, uh, Amazon as affiliate programs, you ain't going to make nothing. $40 seat cover, you're going to get 
two bucks if you're lucky. Um, so I'm going to try to find a jackpot offer and I'll do something like uh, a seat or car seat or maybe car insurance or whatever. And I'm going to find that offer in here and we're going to pair that with it. And then we're going to come on and I'm going to show you, this is how you sell this one offer. Sell them the car seats. That's gravy. Great. Wonderful. Take the check, go to the movies. But what we're really going to do to make money is flip these people into something else, which is a method that I call flipping the market, right? Like um, flipping the market, a good example would be people looking for hardship letters, okay? People looking for hardship letters, you got a lot of people, okay? Hardship letter, hardship letters, lots of people looking hardship letters. Why do they want this? They want it because they're in a hardship. Well, what would help them with a hardship? Well, most people would say, well, let's do a ClickBank offer that gives them letters. Okay, yeah, you'll make six bucks. Yay, whoopee, wonderful. No, no, no. What I want to do is say, click here for my five proven ways to get out of a hardship. Number one, refinance your house. Most people don't realize that you can refinance your house with a 580 credit score right now, even if you've missed payments. There's an FHA program. Call this guy right now or click this link. Boom. Number two. Uh, consolidate your credit card debt. Click here for the, see where I'm going with that? So now we took yeah. a site that, that seems like it's just about writing these cute little letters and now we're flipping yeah. it to something else and that's kind of the key. Do you try to move people into a uh, opt-in list so you can market long-term with them on an affiliate site more than going for the click? Depends on the market. Um, mm -hmm. I created a list in the MySpace market. I got 500,000 people on that list in about two months. And wow. I went in there one day and I clicked the delete button. It was painful because I didn't want that list because it was not the kind of stuff that I, I wanted for a list. It wasn't a long-term thing. They wanted quick, 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 done. Mm -hmm. um, that one was what I call a click flop. It was okay, get in there, make your money, be done. Hardship letters, definitely, I would build a list. Um, car seat covers, I probably wouldn't. Yeah, to be honest, I probably mm. would not build a list in car seat yeah. covers. Nerd getting fit, what about, absolutely. Uh, what about um, uh, wedding related or something like that? Or you know, anything like baby related, where they're going to be buying a lot of stuff over the next several years. Absolutely. Like new, new moms, that kind of thing, you know? And Absolutely. And the reason I do that too, because I, what you'll learn is the way that I do business is very little waste. I don't like to waste one mm -hmm. keystroke. And so what I'm doing is I'm like, okay, if I'm going to build a list in wedding, okay. And you'll notice this on my site, right? If you go and you look at the stuff on my site, you're going to see affiliate marketing dude, all the webinars I post, all the videos I post, they're all keyword optimized. Well, as best as I can, sometimes I get lazy, but um, I try to keyword optimize. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these people on the list and then I'm going to start making content for this list, probably for like six months to a year out. Yep. Okay. These posts are all going to be SEO optimized. And then I'm going to go through and I'm also going to send them to my list. So it's, it's like a big funnel. They go through, they go to the, pa the page, they opt in, they go to the thank you page, then they're on the opt in and then they're getting this content and this content and this content. So it's like a big cycle and then you get to get data mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and everything builds and grows. And then of course, you know, you can hire someone to make videos on it. Um, and once you start to build and grow, when you find that line that works, that's where it's at. And that's why the high ticket niche is valuable. Isn't because of the design. You can design these sites yourself. You could pay a guy on Fiverr to design them. But the guy on Fiverr is probably not going to know how to convert. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through and it's finding the niche. Because where people fail is they don't, they come to me, they say, Marcus, my niche is weight loss. And I'm like, no, it's not. If that's your niche, you're going to fail. Plain and simple. Your niche is double yeah. chin, right? That's a subsect of weight loss and it's no competition. My niche is mortgage. No, it's not. It's hardship letter. And are you telling me for one minute 
you don't think there's a guy in hardship letter making 30, 50 grand a year. It's got to be a guy doing it. The money's there, 31,000 a month, 310 a year. Uh, it's there. Um, now, is it guaranteed? Of course not. Nothing's guaranteed. The average person makes nothing. Um, but if we treat it like a business, we can look at it and say, yep, there's where those people are. That's really good stuff. Yeah, I, you know, I uh, was a disc jockey for uh, a lot of years and I had a, a national DJ uh, network uh, that I started in the 90s. And uh, we we branched it off into a complete wedding directory. Uh, mm -hmm. So we would take people looking for a DJ. And then we, we went to um, the uh, jewelry stores and we had them recommending us so we could get ahead of everybody because we want to get it from the engagement ring, right? So that mm -hmm. lead is more important to us is to get it before they've even decided on the DJ or the photographer or the videographer or anything like that. So if you can like swim upstream on whatever your target niche is, let's say your niche is, um, you know, something to do with, uh, you know, uh, toddlers, well, swim upstream and get them from the new moms, you know, something like exactly. that. Yeah. And that's um, anticipatory marketing. I want to anticipate. So years ago, uh, when I first got out of rehab uh, for alcohol addiction, I had a question. And if you start to ask the right questions about marketing, you could start to make a lot of money. And the question was, mm -hmm. if you went through my search history for the six months leading up to the time I went to go to rehab, could you have predicted that I would have gone to alcohol rehab? And if you think mm -hmm. about this, right over here, you got rehab, which is not cheap. This is a lot of money, right? It's 10 to a hundred K depending on where you go. Okay. So if I mm -hmm. could predict, Hey, wait a minute. Not only can I help people because, Hey, you know what? I wish someone came along and was like, dude, you're an alcoholic. You should go now instead of after you almost completely screw your life up. Uh, that would have been nice, you know, and um, but I'm hard headed and I had to learn the hard way and I wouldn't want it any other way. Um, and so when you look at that, it's like, OK, here's this thing that's going to be a lot of money. Right. Or maybe um, the pipes in my house are making a weird noise. If you know that that's because of poly polybutylene pipes and they need to be replaced, it's ten thousand dollars to do that. Boom. Now you're anticipating what's going to happen next. Um and that's very important because with the drug addiction one, it's like, okay, what did I look up? I looked up uh, alcohol and anxiety. And if you look at it, when you go to my YouTube channel, um, some of the top videos, because YouTube, it's, it's a lot like SEO. Uh, it's a little bit different when you're dealing with suggested views, but it is very SEO too. Um, some of the things I looked up, functioning alcoholic, alcohol and anxiety, alcohol and anxiety, um, and, and what we're doing is whether it's a blog post, whether it's SEO, we're focusing on the data like this one here, 10 things that happened when I quit drinking. I didn't want to make a video about this. I think this video is, is kind of, uh, counterproductive, but when I was doing this, I found that people were looking up this guy's video and there was a lady, I don't know if she's there anymore, uh, but there was another video from a lady uh, who was there. And so I purposely made this video about that topic because of this guy and the other guy. And guess what? That's what old Noah did too. Boom, surprising things that happened when I quit. This is exact, right? Um, now that's not to say copy because what I like to do is, is go a little bit off the beaten path and, and make good content in my own style. And so um, that's kind of how you do it. And when you look at the way that these posts work, like I could go in SEO and I can reverse engineer any page on the internet I want and find out whatever low competition keywords they're ranking for. Boom, super simple. Um, and that's kind of what you want to focus on. One of the things I got a real kick out of, and everybody should do this when they find someone that's doing well on YouTube is go back to the various uh, early posts on YouTube and you go back to your very earliest stuff, you can see Marcus and he's 
you know, very straight and you can tell he's a little bit nervous compared to how relaxed he is now and all of these kinds of things. But I'm so glad that you leave that stuff on there so you can go back. We can go back and maybe that's a, a tough time for you to look at yourself, but you know, it, it allows us to see the whole journey. It's so cool that you left that, all that stuff up there to 2012 and whatnot. There's um, actually the video of the day I went into rehab is actually still up. Uh, and it was me just talking to my audience about, Hey, I'm going to be gone for 30 days. So here's what's going on. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it, it's a big learning curve and that's what you have to do. You just have to stick with it and you have to learn from the data and watch what's going on and really, really make data driven decisions. Yeah. So what are the other groups? And I hope well, we, we have a, uh, maybe another 15 minutes or so with you. Um, <clears throat> what is the uh, other groups that you have? Because you have a coaching group that's like a, a group coaching. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our intro uh, program is a blog profit network. Um, mm -hmm. And this one is really cool because I, I made it inexpensive because people were like, I need something inexpensive. Um, it's mm -hmm. not the greatest training program on the world. Like if you go in there and you watch the videos, you'll be like, okay, well, it's kind of disorganized, whatever. That's not why you buy it. You buy it one, because all the tools that I showed you on this call, like the slide thing, the voodoo plugins, all the plugins that I use on WordPress that I had built for me, mm -hmm. we give you in there. Then the second reason you buy it, which is probably the most important reason is every Tuesday from three to five o'clock Eastern standard time. We hop on a call. You could ask whatever you want. And some people don't see the value of this, but if you see the value in it, because I have a problem with my brain and I have to figure out what you're talking about. Like if Daryl or Simon came to me and they're like, Hey dude, I got this website and that I have to figure it out. Like I'm not going to go inside until I figure out the answer to the question. Even if you leave, right? If you're like, here's my site, it doesn't work. I'm going to figure it out just for my own curiosity. Um, and that's kind of what this is, is you go on there and you bring your site and you say, what would you do with this? We'll look it up. We'll do the reverse engineer. I'll focus you. I'll structure you. We'll look at your stats. Uh, sometimes I even log in and fix people's landing pages if they have their, their codes in time. Um, but that alone is worth its weight in gold. Like if you're doing SEO or websites, the ability, like I wish when I started, there was someone who was there every Tuesday where I can ask whatever I want. You know, that, that is, it's the cheapest program, but that is a big perk is being able to, to be on those calls. Every yeah. Week. Well, how many people well, would people uh, be in the room be with, us with us? If we are in, we are in that group. There's about 60 usually each week. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we get 80. Um, the amount of questions we get, I'll tell you, we, we more often end early because there's no one asking questions, it's pretty rare that we go late. And that's because people don't ask, okay. not because I won't go late. I mean, I'll stay there as long as people ask stuff. Um, now with the high ticket niches, you get a Tuesday morning call and the Tuesday evening call. Now the Tuesday morning call, there's like eight people on it and they're all high ticket niche people. Wow. Have you done Have much you done with a uh, mass page, uh, automated pages with like locations or uh, keywords that are sort of generated and spin text and all that stuff? That... Uh, yes. Previous to 2008, that's what got us hit with the algorithm change. And I won't, I won't even touch it. Like I had some AI software that was promising to make me the best content in the world. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not even going to mess with it. Um, just because, mm -hmm. I mean, when you think about it, you have to think about the investment. So if I'm going to sit and I'm going to write an article and here's the question that'll change your life. Um, if you're looking to get into this and you're struggling, my question was, if I can make $1 a day every day from the work I do today, would I do it? Most people won't do this. They'll say, wait a minute, Marcus, you're, you're full of it because I could go to work right now and I can get a hundred dollars. You got one dollar. I win. You lose. Like like Biff Tannen. I win, McFly. You lose, right? And we look at it. But by day one hundred, watch what happens. So day one hundred, I'm now making the same as you. But day one hundred, if you quit, you get nothing else. 
And by day 270 or 260 or something, I did the math on one of my webinars. It was like day six, 262 or something like that. For the year, I've actually made more than you. So mm -hmm. if you continue, exactly. So mm -hmm. here's the deal. We're SEO guys. Is there not a way I could write content that would make $1 a day? Disclaimer right. results, not typical, complied, or guaranteed. But if mm -hmm. I can, well, okay, I could sit down for four hours and write that. Sure. Because if I do four hours, I'll at least make 365. That's, you know, close to a hundred bucks an hour. If it only goes for one year and if it only makes $1 and I don't look at the data and I just leave it. But if I look at the data and do all the mm -hmm. stuff, I could do better. And then I do the next thing the next day. Um, but I'm going to look at that and I'm going to start to grow and say, okay, well, if I'm going to make 365, sure, I'll invest 50 bucks to have someone write a good piece of content for me. Of course. Um, and then you start to look at this strategically rather than this, this overarching thing that goes on in our community, which is let's just throw everything out there, put the same ads on everything. And hopefully in six to nine months or two years or whatever, I'll start to make a couple of dollars. No, no, no. I want to make it now. I want to see it work now. I want to look at the data. I want to tweak it as it's going. The best thing in internet marketing years ago, like I talked about my magic ad, I had to wait two months to see if that word change worked. Two months. Yeah. SEO. Wow. Wow. I see it like the next day. Pay-per-click, five minutes. Right. Mm -hmm. I actually, uh, the day yeah. that we did the yeah. lotto site, I put it up on a webinar live and I think it's still on my website somewhere. And I was on the webinar and I'm like, check this out. The lotto was 600 million. I'm like, I'm going to make this site. And it made money before the webinar was over. And I'm like, there's, there's the data right there. It's like 12 minutes. Um, but that's the beauty is you get response now and nothing compares to that. If you can get response now, you can tweak and adjust and make profit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. How do you feel do you about, feel about uh, FOMO, FOMO countdown, countdown timers, timers, that kind of stuff, stuff, tactics like that. like that? Um, I used them years ago because that was the thing. Um, would I use them today? No. Like I genuinely, like I actually, I actually, I adopted this thing like a year or two years ago where I'm like, I'm just going to be more than straight up. Like there's straight up, which is here's the offer. And then there's more than straight up, which is, Hey, the results are not typical and blight or guaranteed. Most people make nothing. And here it is. Um, and I found that that's congruent with me, which actually increases sales because people are like, Hey, there it is. You know? And I'm like, Hey, we got a hundred of these because that's all the domains I got. You know, I mean, I'm probably going to get more. Can you get this offer later? Sure. Yeah. I'll probably have more domains, but if you want this one, um, do it now. And I find that that works better. And what I'll tell you is there's something that's better than any FOMO counter, any fancy whiz bang thing. And that is direct contact. You want to know what your market wants. And I know uh, Daryl knows I have this because he, he found me on live chat, put live chat on your site. Why? Because right now I can see all the people on all the pages on my site and I can contact them directly. When I do a black Friday sale, I don't come out and say 50% off for two days. No, no, no. I say, hey, you come tell me your story on my ticket system or email. Tell me how much you want to pay. And if I think it's fair, I'll accept it. You'll get a link for your custom offer. Sells like gangbusters because we're listening to you. And this is actually how I took a business from 238 bucks its first month to well over seven figures. What I did mm -hmm. is this was back in the HTML days. And I said, put your name and email for the free thing. On the thank you page, I said, what is your number one question about insert niche here? I had a straight up form mm -hmm. mail, old ghetto form mail, right? Um, <laughs> I don't even know if those work anymore. And they would, they would put their questions in. And I would sit there and I'd answer each one. Why? Because I learn. Two, because I sold like three out of 10, you ain't going to get that on your website. Right. But if you respond and you're like, Hey, Sally, you know, I know you tried things in the past and you struggled. Here's why I think this is different, you know, or, or check this video out. I think it'll help you or, or that. 
Um, those are invaluable. And I think what's going to win going forward with this AI digital Mark Zuckerberg universe in your head um, <laughs> is the old school. Like, I don't know about you, but I miss going and having coffee with people. I miss going and shaking hands and saying, how you doing? Um, and a lot of people do miss that. And I think if you can put that on your site somehow, you will win. And you'll see the difference between making 0.2 cents a click or two cents a click and making a fortune. Mm. Um, and I watch how people do it with YouTube and, and SEO. And I look at the numbers and I listen. Now that I don't drink, I go to the marketing meetings and I sit at the bar and I just listen. Um, best thing ever, you know, get sober just so you can learn marketing. Um, and I'll listen to numbers people say. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm getting like 30 times that. And if I showed them my website, they wouldn't even believe me because I'm doing these little things. Yeah, this is great stuff. Uh, when you do your videos uh, with the crazy riding around your backyard with your Lambo and all the fun things that you do, first mm -hmm. of all, is that a passion for you to be silly like that on your videos or do you do it to uh, gain subscribers? Is it more like, is it just the playfulness of Marcus or is it, it because it works? Uh, it's probably more because I like it. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's probably more of it. Cause like if I look at the data, technically what works is the videos we've all seen from the channels that are manipulated and, and duplicated. That is obviously what's working. You know, hi, I'm this person who's never marketed a day in my life. And I'm going to show you this new website that makes money that, you know, that, that kind of stuff will get the views. But what I find mm -hmm. is I'm after a much more valuable to me visitor. And this yeah. is the secret to making it work because I just want the people that I want. Do I want people uh, in countries that can't afford my stuff? Not really. You know, I, I could get more views, but do I want that? Um, when I do SEO, do I want someone who's looking for free this? Um, or do I want something else? Years ago, one of the things I learned was I could go for the word make money online. And you would think that that would be mm -hmm. the number one converter for me. It's not. Right. It was actually AdSense. Yeah. AdSense was oh, the king. Wow. And there was no competition. Um, so yeah. what you want to do is figure out either how to take that visitor and make them your ideal person so you can make money or how to only attract the people that you want. Cause if I can make the same amount with a 10th of the people might as well, because that's, that's wasted yeah. effort, you know? So your growth on the channel that you've had, you, you contribute to being super consistent and doing a produce thing Monday and Friday and doing a live stream on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, so what kind of impact did that consistency do over the last year or so? Because I think I noticed uh, you said something on there, but I just wanted to hear that from you here because I think people need to hear that, um, that, you know, consistency. I know it isn't sexy, <laughs> To not, you know, be totally free. Because I'm sure, Marcus, there's days you don't want to do this, you know. I didn't want but to But you made today. a commitment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You I made a commitment. Was... And... Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that, like that that consistency and how you pause, bust through, you know. Sure. And I didn't mean for your show. I meant for the video I put out today. <laughs> I <laughs> thought that, though. <laughs> no problem. That's, that's, that's okay. Yeah. That's all right. Um, but no, what you want to look at is this. And I hear this from lots of people with content and YouTube. It's the 80-20 rule. 80-20. 20% of what you do is going to do really well. 80% will flatline. Now, what's going to happen is I started doing three times a week. I was doing like once a week, sometimes two. It was all over the place. But when I started yeah. doing three times a week, now the live stream, I will tell you in all honesty, there is debates that it might hurt rather than help. I don't know. Verdict's not really out on that. Um, but I do try to make my live stream now. It used to be a sales webinar. Now it's just free stuff. So mm -hmm. um, what's going to happen here? is your 80-20 rule. So if you're going to do, let's say, 10 videos, two are probably going to do really well or better than average. Eight are probably going to do okay. 
but you're going to get 10 videos worth of data. This is where the key is. Forget about how good it does because people look at stuff that doesn't work and they go, oh, it didn't work. This sucks. Not me. I look at it and say, like today's video, I'm not happy with how it's doing. That might do better later because it does have the Craigslist word, but I'm not super happy. You know, I kind of slammed it out. Um, but it's going to give me data. So now, instead of five or six data points a month, now I'm getting 20. And now, instead of waiting three months to get my zinger videos, I call them. This would be six zingers, I think it is. If you do the 20 rule, it might be, I don't know, it might be four. I think it's four. Um, you know, we're going to look at that and say, okay, four over here, we're six, but that's three months to get that. This is one month. So I'm already double plus four. So what would that be? Uh, something like that or double by the time we're there. Um, so I'm getting all that data and the consistency is teaching me stuff. Now, if you're consistent putting out content just for the sake of putting out content, no, you're not going to grow. You have to be consistent in watching what it does and following the trends and looking at the data and looking at your thumbnails and looking at your SEO. Whatever you're doing, you have to be in it for the data. You have to. Um, and what this did is it actually 3X'd, even 4X'd my viewership. Pretty much, it took about four months for it to really peak and it's attributed to the Cotton Eye Joe video. That one is one of the ones that skyrocketed. But I wouldn't have got that if I wasn't consistent. Yeah, Walter uh, asked the question. Kind of, I think that you answered this. But uh, what about adding a chat bot to uh, engagement um, on the pages that you have? Um, it's not going to compete with me hiring someone or me doing it myself. Because mm -hmm. what you're going to learn again, it's about data. I'm going to listen to people in their own words tell me what they want and. You know, it's funny. Yeah. If you had to guess, I'll, I'll do a little guessing game here. If you had to guess what the number one question I get on live chat is, what do you think it is? The number one, say, come on. And they're like, okay, hi, it's Marcus. How are you? Number one question. They is this ask really you? Is this, is this really, really you? you? It's exactly the number one question because they're afraid yeah. that it's not. Um, and yeah. it's funny because yeah. like if it says it's and me. And you know what? <laughs> You use provide support, which I used probably 10 or 15 years ago. You probably used it back then and just kept using it. But it, mm -hmm. there is a retro look to it as well that kind of matches up with sort of the sort of retro, you know, we're humans. We're, you know, we're not these fancy chatbots that, that you we've all seen. Like we've gone to the website and there's a little thing and you start chatting and it starts off like you've got a human there. But as you start talking, you know, nobody's home. You know, <laughs> exactly. And um, the reason I like it is because I hate learning curves. I, I, yeah. I detest them. Um, if I don't need to get the newest fancy software, I'm not going to. Right. Like it took right. me forever to do WordPress. I was like, I could do it in HTML. What are you talking about? Um, yeah. Then, when I told you we we're using StreamYard, you were like, oh, what's that? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm using old fashioned OBS, you know, the, the, the old free right. version. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I don't want a learning curve because it's going to cut into my profit and the time right. that it takes to learn it. Uh, click funnels, beautiful software. It's good. A lot of people do great things with it. Do I want to sit down and learn it? Do I have the time? No. Is it going to make that much difference? Probably. I probably won't even notice it. It might even have a reverse effect because I don't know how to use it. Um, and that's what people don't realize is you like the shiny object thing. You don't need shiny. Mm -hmm. The same thing I'm doing today is the same thing I did with the cigar site back in 1999. It's the same exact thing. Now today mm -hmm. it's a little different because I'm not going for cigars. I'm literally of the mindset of there are like if I go to Ahrefs and I'm going to do this off screen because I know this one's going to get results we don't want. Um, <laughs> if I go to Ahrefs and you guys can all try this, but disclaimer, you will see stuff you don't want to see. Um, you go to Keyword Explorer, you put nothing in the box and you hit search. Okay, when I do that, that brings up four billion keywords with an insane search volume. Then I'm going to go to KD. I'm going to drop it to one or less which is pretty much 
the worst SEO in the world can usually get a one. Now I'm going to hit go. And I have the first result has 50 million searches a month. The second one, 9.8, 6.8, 6.6. 4. So I am literally looking at 84 million keywords with zero competition or one competition. And all I need to do is go through this list and be like, okay, so uh, this guy's looking for whatever. What do I do with that? Okay, now there's a lot to weed through. Sure. Uh, one mm -hmm. of them is Craigslist Sacramento. Okay, interesting. Um, and then I can go through and look at all these other ones. And all I have to do is think about the fact that, I mean, there's people that get 3,000 visitors a month that make a living if you get the right 3000 visitors. Um, and there's, that's where I look at it and there's really no excuses when I could go through and just start going through this list. Like we did a video about phone numbers. I did one about uh, how to make money reporting spam calls. Right. And mm -hmm. literally phone numbers are looked up so much. I think it was Kelly Felix, the rich jerk guy years ago. He had a software and he made a site that ranked for um, every phone number known to man. Is that ethical? I don't know. Debatable. I wouldn't do it. I'd probably just go for the spam ones if it was me. Um, and that got him a bunch of traffic. He was making, I think, seven figures off that one because it was just so simple. There you go. If you're looking for these, here it is. Um, easy stuff. Easy stuff.